In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to this Tilter Trailer. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of a walk around so you can sort of see it a bit better. It's a bit hard to see it in the garage. Uh, but it's a very cold day today, so I've got it inside and I'll just give you an overview of some of the features. So, first of all, this trailer is manufactured by um, Tilter Trailers. So, Tilter Trailers are up in Queensland. They do, however, sh um, ship these all around Australia. Uh, I will put up a link um, for their website in the description, but if you just Google Tilter Trailers, I'm sure it would come up. Alright, so this trailer can carry a car up to 1.2 tonnes. Um, the actual mass of the trailer itself is 300 kilos. Uh, the um, gross vehicle mass is rated at 1.5 tonnes. So, yeah, that allows it to carry a vehicle which weighs 1.2 tonnes or less. So, ideally it's good for a car like this, the classic Mini, Morris Mini. Uh, something like the BMW Mini, oh, it's wrapped up at the moment, but that, uh, it's around 1.1 um, tonne, so you can carry that one too. Uh, some of the features, um, obviously you've probably noticed that it's only a single axle trailer, but it is a heavy duty single axle, so it is able to carry um, one over a tonne. Uh, some of the features of it are that the actual frame itself, it's not galvanised, but they paint it in a colour which looks galvanised. So um, the only part that's galvanised are the actual ramps. Um, the mud guards, they're actually made out of plastic. You'll notice a lot of these on boat trailers. So they're the same type that are used on boat trailers. Uh, the advantage of those is, or you, you can actually step on them. Um, the frame has got metal bars that sort of come out here to support the step. So you can step on those when you, the car's loaded and you need to get out of the car. Um, it's got disc brakes on both wheels. And if you're not familiar with these tow hitches, the way it works, you uh, set, or you leave it as it is when you're normally towing. The weight of the trailer pushes in on here and then this end section here pushes out onto that um, lever there and then that activates the brakes. Of course you have that in that position. If you're reversing the trailer uphill, you have this little um, section that goes in there to allow you to push it up a hill if you're going reversing up a hill. Okay, so let's actually have a look at the, um, the mechanism itself. So obviously it's called a tilter trailer for a reason. That's because it doesn't have ramps as such what you're looking at there are the platforms that the car will sit on, but the whole trailer will tilt. So in order to tilt it, uh, you have this locking mechanism inside here, and once it's unlocked, I'll show you a bit more in detail, but you pretty much um, pull out, pull on, the locking, pull on the locking mechanism, and then the trailer will drop down to the ground. So it pivots, so the whole frame kind of pivots on this point here and over here. So let's have a look at what it looks like on the ground. Uh, there we go. So that angle is beautiful. Um, the cars drive up it, no scraping or anything. I haven't actually tried the BMW Mini on it yet. Um, one of the other features as well, once you've driven the car up, uh, you get past the point of centre of gravity. The trailer itself will tilt down because of the, the weight of the car and then it clicks back into that locking mechanism there. So the way that works, you have this part here that um, is on a spring and then that clips in onto this part here. Um, just for safety, once you've got the car strapped down, um, the way the straps work, one of them goes over the wheel, the other strap um, connects onto the drawbar and then onto the wheel and then onto here. So that way, the in case anything went wrong, it's not gonna flip up on its own when you've got the car on there. All right, so let's just talk about um, adjustability of these tracks. So obviously, um, it needs to be adjustable to suit different cars, because uh, compared to a conventional flatbed car trailer, the ramps are an issue how you load it. 
um, but then the actual trailer itself doesn't matter but then of course this one you've got to have the ramps adjusted to suit the wheel um, axle width of the actual vehicle you put on there so I've got this actually set up it fits uh, the mini the classic mini on there nicely but to adjust these there are only four u-bolts they are sectioned here one there one there and then again at the other end over here there's a couple more there so each of them has um, two sets so once you loosen those up you can then either move the, the tracks in or out so the maximum width would be to have this edge rail here right against the guard um, and then you can actually bring them even more there's, there's enough um, play on the wire um, which the electrical wire runs inside it for the lights but there's enough um, wire to bring them right in so if you've got something like a quad bike you want to put that on there it would work for that too okay so not only do the tracks move um, in and out they can move um, more towards the front or to the rear of the trailer if you needed to do that. Um, that can affect the way the car sits on the trailer once it's loaded. Um, in the case of a Mini, a classic Mini, if the front wheel of the Mini was up to here, sort of where I've got the tracks at the moment, um, the centre of gravity is too far forward. I mean, it'll still be fine, but I will sort of want it to sit back a bit. Um, but if I move these ramps further back that's one possibility but then you're making the trailer a little bit longer um, there may, may be issues with the wiring so the wire comes out here and then onto here so I could probably shift it back that much um, but then the trailer is a little bit longer it just makes it harder to manage um, in the spot at the front of my house where I park it so I'm going to leave it in that position um, one thing that I'm going to add on to it uh, another um, square tube like this I'll have that sort of fixed sort of just into here just so the wheel can stop against that rather than here and I'll, it, it might take a bit of playing around to get it adjusted and balanced to how it should be best suited okay so with a classic mini um, the center point of gravity is it's going to be roughly where the jacking point is um, that's why the, the engineers have built it and put the jacking point here uh, so at that point there, that's the point in which if you were to jack the car up from this point It's not going to tip more forward or backwards. That's the central point of balance So that position here when the car's on the trailer, you'd ideally want this spot to be slightly In front of the front wheels So you definitely don't want that jacking point to be sort of over here when the car's on the trailer It needs to be in front of the front wheels towards the drawbar just so there's not too much weight at the back of the trailer. Um, that's something I'll have to play around with to get the exact position right. Um, where I'll put these bars here, if the front wheel is sort of up to here, the centre point of gravity would sort of be about here. So that's in front of the wheels. But I'll try that and see how it handles. So the way I'm going to bolt these on, I've just got some, these are aluminium. Um, some U-bolts just to bolt them down. I'll put one on both sides and that way the wheel can sort of stop against that because if it's stopping up here it's a bit too far forward. In order to secure the wheel um, there's a, a couple of straps that you need to put on. Now you notice that I've got this um, barrier um, installed on there now. so the wheel sort of stops here. That will allow the centre of gravity of the Mini. It's about um, 50 centimetres from the back of the wheel to that jacking point so that's going to sit um, for forward of the axle but not too far forward um, I might need to move that again but I'm just um, having a few tests just to see how we go all right so first of all we, there's two straps so one of them has a loop like that um, and then this clamp down the bottom so the way it works you need to adjust this loop so it fits over the the top of the tire like that and you want to sort of cover the maybe the top quarter of the tire so that might still need to be tightened up a little bit more because uh, okay. you want to sort of cover the top of the wheel um, but not too far up not too far down because if it goes too far down it's going to just pull straight over the tire we don't want that to happen. Alright, so the end 
which has um, this little hook there, that's actually got to fit through the mesh on the actual ram. Okay, so for the purpose of this demonstration, I want you to ignore this green strap because that's just there to stop the wheel from falling over um, while I put these straps on there. So that's not part of it. Alright, so the part of the strap, the loop that sits on top of the tyre, that sort of just sits there. I'll just bring it forward a little bit for now. So this end of the strap needs to hook into the mesh on this um, ramp here. So the way that kind of goes on, it pretty much just goes through um, that hooks on there for safety. That should be like that. So that's how it does up. So if I sort of just pick a point, I'll say here. Um, so that's, that's how that bit's secure. Um, this might need to be moved out a little bit because the wheel is a lot smaller, but I'll just see how I go for now. So sit, sit that over the tyre. So that is how it is sitting at the moment. Just move that strap into the middle, like that, okay. So that seems to be okay so far. Okay, so the next part of the strap that is supplied, um, one end has a little buckle like that, the other end is just um, an the loose strap. This needs to loop around the drawbar. Uh, so it just goes around, you can put it however you think will fit best. Just like that would be okay. So that is secured there. Normally if the tyre is up here, that um, spacing should be okay. I might actually have to move this onto the other side just because of how I've got it set up. So I'm going to just slide that across and then you'll be able to sort of see how things look on the other side. Actually no, I'll, I'll leave it there. Because, um, I think I can see a better way to do this. Okay, so with that second strap, with that end attached to the draw bar, you need to bring up the strap and you have to just tuck it through this first, the loop on that first strap. So it goes underneath there. I'm just gonna put that like that for now. Uh, get rid of them twists, because that is nice and secure. Pull it a bit tighter. Then the next thing that needs to happen is that this needs to be fed through this ratchet, which is bolted onto the trailer. Um, that can actually turn too, just to get the angle right. All right, let's get that threaded through. So the way you do it, just feed it through to take up most of the slack, uh, but not all of it. We'll just Yep, that's nice and neat. Okay, um, I'll just slacken it up a bit because then I can start um, doing up the ratchet. When I'm tightening that up, the wheel's moving a bit because obviously it's not bolted onto a car. Um, what you need to do is there's a safety catch in there, so make sure that is just pushed against uh, in the closed position. This end loop that is tied up, you can do some just hitches on there just to um, tidy it up. Um, the same with this piece here. Um, there's some you can just tie it up just to get those loose ends out of the way so they're not rubbing on the road. Okay, let's have a bit of a walk around how that works. So you can sort of see how that is how it attaches. I've actually ordered a new set of these um, straps from the manufacturer because they are a bit rough. It's just the previous owner of this trailer hasn't cared for it that well. Uh, it's fraying in a few bits just for safety. I've ordered a new set that wasn't too expensive. Um, the new set came comes with these ratchets too so I've just got to wait for them to arrive all right so that's how that looks now, one other thing I want to point out too is um, if you can remember how the release mechanism to release the trailer to make it tilt if you remember how that works 
Um, it's probably unlikely, but if it ever did wobble and come loose, um, the trailer, if it's strapped down with a car on there, it shouldn't really lift up at all. Like this isn't as tight as it should be. Um, just the force or the cable from the draw bar up and then down to here should keep it down and not moving. But the weight of the car will keep it, the trailer pressed down anyway. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's likely that you could, if you were towing it when there was no car loaded onto it, it could undo. So safety precaution would be to put a strap around here and then to the draw bar when you're towing it without a car on there. Just for safety, just so in case you hit a bump and then something flips up and then the back of the trailer rubs on the ground. You don't want that to happen. Alright, just one more thing I want to show you before I pack the spare wheel away. The way they designed this, so the mesh is sort of level with this edge bar. When it gets to this point, you can sort of see it dip down, so you're about to feel it when you sort of drive on the trailer. Um, and the wheel, I don't know whether this will do the same thing when it's on a car. Uh, and when the, when the tyre sort of gets close to that edge, it's not really gripping. It sort of just slides along and hopefully will stay on track. Obviously the same on the other side too. It won't roll over that easily. So it should stay pretty much on track, providing you got it lined up nicely. automatically locks. Um, you need to of course pull out that lever. Um, it's got this extension piece on the end that needs to hook onto there because then that will um, hold it in the open position 